Oh, she's smoking. <laughs> Is upgrading your brakes really worth it? Today, we're going to be testing three brake upgrades to see what difference they make and if you need them on your four-wheel drive. Oh man, that stopped so good. The nose of the vehicle just dipped so much that the engine low oil pressure light just came on. For this test, we're filming in controlled conditions down here at Pheasantwood Circuit at Maroolan. And we've got leading engineers from Bendix Brakes with us to record and log all the data from the testing and to make sure it's accurate. So this is how it's going to work. We're going to set up some cones on the straight of the pheasant wood circuit. As soon as we get to these cones, we're going to hit the brakes doing 80 kilometers an hour, and we're going to be recording how fast the vehicle is going, how long it takes to stop, and the amount of pressure I applied to the brakes to pull the vehicle up. With each brake test, we're going to do it five times in a row to show how the different brake setups perform under stress and the effects of heat and brake fade. Righto, so I just thought I'd show you the testing equipment we're using. So first up is this pedal effort sensor. It's connected to the brake pedal down here, and this will measure how much force I'm applying to the brake to stop the vehicle. That'll be talking to this tablet, which has got software on it that uses GPS, and it'll measure the speed I'm traveling. It'll get the data from how much pressure from the brake pedal, and it'll also measure the distance that it'll take to stop, so we can compare all the results at the end. And here's our test vehicle. It's a 2017 FX4 Ford Ranger. The reason we chose this vehicle is, as you can see, it's got a fair few accessories on it already because we wanted to use a vehicle that had a lot of gear on it that a lot of you guys would have on your vehicles at home. It's had a GVM upgrade, but it's still on standard brakes, so I'll be really keen to see how it stops on this test. First up, we're testing the OE brakes. We've put fresh pads and rotors on to keep things fair when we test the upgrades. Brake test one, here we go. Come into the corner. Feel like a race car driver. And power out, speed up. Here we go, and brake. She stopped. Got some data. All right, so the first test, braking distance was 44 meters and my max pedal effort was 303 newtons. That was pretty good. On test two and three, we recorded a similar stopping distance and pedal effort. But now is when the brake fade starts to set in. Test four, here we go. Oh yeah, that's way worse. Wow. After four runs, you can see we're seriously losing braking performance and they're starting to smoke. That's because the brakes are heating up and aren't working as well because it's harder for them to dissipate all that heat. All right, test five, here we go. I can really start to feel the pedal sinking to the floor a lot more, so it'll be interesting to see how this test goes. Come on, baby. That was a long way. Oh, how, cra <coughs> how crazy is that? That's after a few tests. The brakes are really starting to fade here. They're starting to get hot and they're not as efficient. The interesting thing was the distance we were stopping wasn't too different, but the amount of force I had to apply to the pedal to get it to stop was greater. Your standard brakes are fine for day-to-day -day driving in a stock vehicle, but OEM brakes are not designed to keep up with the demands we're putting on our four-wheel drives when we load them up with gear, larger tyres and accessories. Your standard brakes are still going to work, but the problem is when you need them to work in an emergency situation, they could fail and the consequences could be huge. The reason for that is because when you add weight to your vehicle, it means greater friction is needed to stop. When your brake pads contact the brake rotor, it's that friction that slows you down. The more you increase that friction, the better your braking performance. But as a byproduct of friction, you create heat. As the brakes heat up, they lose their efficiency and they won't work as well. That's why you have different design brake rotors like this with all the grooves in it. It's all to help dissipate heat better. In simple terms, the better your brakes can get rid of the heat they make from slowing the car down, the better you're going to stop. Remember that if you've got a modified four-wheel drive, even driving around with it empty, all the accessories you've added like bar work, 12 volt, water tanks, roof rack, lights, drawers, all contribute to poorer braking performance. 
So here are a bunch of brake upgrade options to help you fix it. We're gonna be fitting them one by one to show you the difference they make to a fully loaded four wheel drive. What we're gonna be doing now is one of the best bang for buck upgrades you can make. We're gonna be swapping out the original rotors and pads for some better quality and tougher versions. And we're also gonna be changing out the brake lines for some braided ones as well. In the rear, we're also putting in some upgraded drums and drum shoes. Let's head back out onto the track and see how much difference it's made. Here we go. So this is test one with the upgraded rotors and pads and then the upgraded drums in the rear. 80 k's an hour. So first test with the upgrade, our stopping distance is similar to the OE brakes at 43 metres, but the pedal effort is significantly lower, registering at 184 newton metres. But how will it hold up on the fifth test? All right, test five, here we go. So keen to see what the results are for this. It's 80 and hit it. Awesome, so even on the fifth test, I'm still stopping. This was 39 meters, 79 kilometers an hour at 252 newtons. Even on the fifth test, I'm still stopping consistently compared to the uh, standard brakes, which are really starting to fade at this time. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Sick, I love getting data. <laughs> Well, that was an awesome test. And what was really interesting was I was stopping a few meters earlier than with the standard brakes. But the interesting thing was I was putting way less pedal effort in. And that's where brake fade was really coming in with the standard brakes. What was happening was as they were heating up, I was having to stand on the brakes a lot more to get the vehicle to stop. And I was stopping further down the test track. Whereas with the Bendix upgrade, I was putting in less pedal effort and still stopping at a consistent distance each time. Awesome bit of kit. That's an awesome upgrade if you want better performance from your brakes, but want to keep the costs down. But let's take a look at why we got better performance out of just changing rotors, pads and lines. The upgraded rotors have these slots and dimples and are made of a high carbon metal that improves their ability to dissipate heat. This means you can brake more before they get too hot. The slots in the rotor are designed to help with heat dissipation and the leading edge will allow the pads to bite better to the rotor, giving even better performance. These pads are made with better materials to increase friction over your standard ones, which means they will clamp to the rotor better and last longer too. This kit comes with braided lines to replace your old rubber ones. When you apply a lot of pressure to your brakes, some of that pressure is lost because the rubber can expand, particularly if they're old lines. What do I mean by braided? There is a stainless steel braid over the top of the internal line which will protect the brake line and stop it from expanding. Imagine this balloon is your old rubber line. When I squeeze on it, the air moves in any direction. But when I add this tape, the air is directed towards one end. This is what a braided line does. It helps direct the pressure to your brakes. Next up in the brake upgrade kit is upgrading your rear shoes and your drums. This will swap out your original drums and shoes for better quality ones than standard that'll handle the heat from braking much better than the standard ones. As we know, heat is what makes brakes not work as well. So the longer they take to heat up, the better they will work. Upgrading your drums and your drum shoes like this isn't gonna be the ultimate brake performance upgrade, but it's the perfect option if you're due to replace your drums and your drum shoes, you don't wanna break the bank and you want a slight performance increase. So that's the basic brake upgrade kit and the drum upgrade. The next upgrade we're testing is swapping out the drums in the rear for a set of disc brakes. Righto, so the disc brake conversion's all fitted up. We're just giving it a bit of a gravity bleed and then chuck the wheels back on, head back out to the racetrack, see how she goes. All right, let's do it. This is the first test with the disc conversion in the back. Still got the upgraded brakes on the front. I'm super keen to see how she stops. Let's have a go, coming up to 80. Oh man, that felt so good. On the first run, the disc conversion has reduced the stopping distance by a reported 14 metres. Pedal effort is lower too at 195 newton metres. Wow, that's unreal. As you can see, the braking distance crept up over the next couple of runs, but the pedal effort stayed way down. 
All right, final test with the disc conversion. See how we go. Coming up to 80. The fifth test sees us stopping a touch over 40 meters, but my max pedal effort has stayed fairly consistent at 272 newtons. These results are pretty similar to the fifth test on the basic upgrade, but the drum conversion provided a massive initial increase in stopping power when comparing the first runs. With the drum to disc conversion fitted, you could really feel this vehicle stopping even better than it did before. Let's have a look at why this kit performs so much better. Drum brakes do work pretty well, but one of the biggest problems is if you take your four-wheel drive off-road, to ensure your drums are working correctly, you will need to inspect, clean and adjust them each time, particularly if you've driven through mud or water. So you might be thinking, if they need so much attention, you've got to adjust them after wheeling trips and stuff like that, why have so many manufacturers put them on the back of utes? Well, some of the main reasons are cost and the ability for them to adjust the varying loads in the back. Drums work by pushing outward on the drum when you brake. In the 1950s, it was discovered that you could get better performance by clamping onto a surface instead of pushing outward, which is how disc brakes work. Another thing to consider is because disc brakes have a lot of air moving around them as you drive, they're gonna cool better than drums. Whereas because drums are essentially a semi-sealed unit, all that heat created inside the drum, it means it's gonna heat up way more and it's not gonna be able to get rid of that heat as well as a disc brake would and that's why that will never work as well. This kit will completely do away with your rear drums and let you run disc brakes all round, which will improve your braking performance considerably. Righto, so we've seen how standard brakes perform, and then we put some upgraded rotors, pads, and lines on the front. Then we put some upgraded drums and drum shoes on the rear, and even did the rear disc conversion. But now, I wanna show you the big mummer of brake setups. This one is a serious brake upgrade. You would want this if you're towing a big van or you want your ute to literally stop like a performance car. It does this by adding extra pistons to the front brake calipers plus a massive rotor. This is the old caliper out of the Ford Ranger. You can see it's got two pistons behind here and that's pretty common in most four drives. Most will either have two like this or four in the case of some Toyotas and stuff like that. The way it works is these two pistons will push on the inboard pad on the rotor. And then you've got this cradle here, which is holding the outboard pad, which will allow this pad to clamp on the rotor on the other side. Works pretty well, but what makes this kit so good, check this out, it's got six pistons, three for each pad, and that allows a much more even clamping pressure onto the brake pad. As well as that, these pistons are actually slightly different sizes, and that, again, allows a much more even clamping pressure onto the pad. This kit will step your front brake rotors up to 356 mm diameter, which means your pads have a much larger surface area to clamp onto when you're trying to stop. The larger diameter rotor provides greater braking power due to increased brake torque. Think of it like stepping up from a regular wrench to a breaker bar. Having the larger rotor also helps to dissipate heat better as there's a larger surface to absorb and spread the heat out, which means you'll get less brake fade after lots of hard braking like if you're towing down a hill. Rightio, we're back on the track. Got the vehicle lined up for the test track. You can see the braking point down the bottom. Got the mega brakes fitted to the front and I'm so keen to see how this goes. Count me down. Three, two, one. Let's hit it. So this is a six pop brake upgrade with the drum to disc conversion. Coming up to 80 kilometers an hour. Here we go, here we go. And brake. Oh, oh, oh man, that stopped so good. What's it say? <laughs> the nose of the vehicle just dipped so much that the engine low oil pressure light just came on. Oh man, those results are insane. That is sick. Holy heck, that stopped in 27.4 meters. That's 17 meters shorter than what the OE recorded on its first run and with a pedal effort of only 189.86 Newton meters. After repeat runs, the brakes are performing just as well, consistently stopping in just over 30 meters. Oh, you can feel it, that is mental. Even on the fifth run, we are seeing barely any brake fade. 31 meters, 339 Newton meters on my foot at 80 kilometers an hour. That is insane. 
What's been really awesome about this test is the fact that we've used the same test vehicle and gone from standard brakes, upgrading them with rotors and pads and drum upgrades, then going through to a disc conversion, right through to the big brake upgrade at the end. But what's even more interesting is the fact that that's where I stopped with the big brake upgrade and the disc conversion in the rear. And right here is where I stopped with the standard brakes. Hey guys, it's giveaway time and Bendix are giving away a complete ultimate four-wheel drive brake upgrade kit for one of you lucky four-wheel drivers. To enter, all you gotta do is firstly comment below and tell us the make and model of your four-wheel drive. And then secondly, tell us why you need a brake upgrade kit for your vehicle. It might be that you've got an awesome trip to Cape York planned and you need to upgrade your brakes before you go, or you've added a lot of weight to the vehicle and it's not stopping like it used to. Whatever the reason, comment below, make and model and why you need a brake upgrade kit. We'll pick one lucky winner, send them out some brand new Bendix brakes. Be quick and good luck. So now that we've tested out a bunch of different brake upgrades, let's collate all the data so you can see what kit is right for you. Righto, here are the results. If you want to have a closer look, pause the video now. Overall, each upgrade made an improvement over the last. The level 1 upgrade performed significantly better than the OE brakes, showing minimal signs of brake fade. The drum to disc conversion provided a massive increase in initial braking performance, but did show signs of brake fade after the repeat efforts. And of course, the big brake upgrade had the biggest effect on braking distance. Being a whopping 17 metres shorter than OE on its first run, and settling into a consistent pedal effort and braking distance for its repeat attempts. But how does that translate to the real world? Well, as an example, let's say you have a fairly lightweight trader ute. It carries tools and equipment during the week, and on the weekend, you load it up with camping gear or tow a tinny down to the local boat ramp. That's where upgrading your rotors, pads and brake lines will really come into its own. It'll give you much better braking performance without breaking the bank. On top of that, it's the perfect upgrade to make when it comes time to replace your brakes anyway. We reckon that the drum to disc conversion is the best upgrade for four-wheel drivers that use their vehicle off-road a lot. It's way less maintenance than your drums and it will give you much better braking performance. Anyone who's ever driven a four-wheel drive with drum brakes through some mud, then on something steep and scary, will definitely get their money's worth out of this setup. But what about if you seriously load your vehicle up and tow a big van, boat or trailer? That's where the drum to disc conversion really comes into its own as well. Now, the big dog. To be honest, this brake upgrade is not cheap, so it's one to do if you need serious stopping performance from your vehicle. This will be perfect if you drive a constantly loaded vehicle or you've upgraded your GVM and want to tow a big heavy van. Plus, imagine if you combine this kit with the disc conversion in the back. There wouldn't be many four-wheel drives out there that could stop better, fully loaded up, than with that setup. Well, hopefully this video has shown you just how much your braking performance can be affected when you've got a fully loaded four-wheel drive on standard brakes. It's been awesome to see the difference in braking performance from going from standard rotors and pads through to upgraded pads and rotors, braided lines, drum upgrades, drum to disc conversion, and finally, the big six pot caliper upgrade. And being able to drive the vehicle with each one, it was awesome to really feel the difference in the driver's seat. I can tell you, you could really feel the difference in braking performance. And if you can't half tell, I've had an absolute ball being on this racetrack, testing out a bunch of different brake setups. So I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Pheasant Wood Circuit down at Maroolan for letting us use the track. Other than that, we'll catch you next time.